Hi, this is Divorce Overtime. We talked to you watching our regular show, and we're doing more now on Divorce Overtime. We've been talking with attorney Bob Barrasso about new developments in child support, and we're going to continue talking a little bit more about the questions we didn't get to in the, in the regular show. Uh, Bob, is it true that moms want sole custody and dads want joint custody? Um, that often is the case. That is often the case. Um, uh, but there has been change. I've looked at recent studies, though, and and I think I read that nationally in 2008, which is the last year they have information, 25% of households are mother only, and only about 3 or 4% of households are father only. So uh, when the rubber hits the road, mothers are raising kids by themselves a lot more often than fathers are raising kids by themselves. So mothers often will come into a divorce or a paternity case having been doing a lot more of the hands on parenting. So, yes, I think traditionally and statistically, you have more moms that want sole custody and more dads are interested in having equal time. Well, it was interesting. I that we saw in the paper in the last week, which is saying that, that statistically now that there are more people, kids living in families with unmarried parents than there are living Kids living with like single moms or something like that. That's true. There is just a, the whole unmarriage question. Yeah. Is, uh, and, but they are, they are, But the interesting thing about that study is they are living with mom and dad. Mom and dad are just not as anxious to tie the knot. Well, I think sometimes they just don't want to go through the hassle of the divorce. Although we've had, I'm sure you've seen cases too, yeah. where now people come in and, and then they're doing it. They have a kid. They have a house, and then. Yeah. There's, you know, they want to get to essentially divorce, but they're not married. Yep, and the law is changing, too. The paternity laws now let dads try to get temporary custody in a paternity case, and they let them uh, try to rush into court. It used to be that until they proved paternity and until they had a final trial, they didn't have any rights. So the court is catching up with that, and uh, we are. a lot of my cases are paternity cases. They're cases where the people don't have property disputes, and some of them barely know each other. Um, we were talking a little bit about on the regular part of the show about uh, the proposed revisions, but what is what's happening with the proposed revisions of Arizona laws in custody? Well, the ad hoc committee has just put forth its final recommendations. They're going to start getting a lot of input from uh, lawyers groups, from the Domestic Violence Coalition, from mothers groups and fathers groups. They're going to get some feedback. A lot of times things change. Um, and they may end up rejecting the whole thing, but there's been a lot of work done on it. There's a lot of really good ideas in there. Um, my main thought about it is we need to just keep in mind that lawyers and judges and factual disputes can cost money. So when we ask the courts to consider like 10 different things when they're considering intimate partner violence, we, we worry a little bit that that's going to encourage too much litigation, get back to the days where there's private eyes and things like that. But these are important issues. Um, they are very important issues, and, and you have to strike a balance between fairness and not having the thing take three years and cost $20,000. Um, who's behind all these changes? Um, there is uh, people in the legislature that care. There are professors from both U of A and ASU and nationally. There's mental health experts that have uh, a bone in this uh, war. Uh, I wouldn't call it a war, but in, in, in this attempt to revise the statutes and um, lawyers like me. What is the, what is the, I mean, a lot of this comes back to uh, um, custody, joint custody. What, why is that such a big deal? Well, when people break up, um, they want to be involved. When couples are together, they have equal rights. They get to make decisions for their kids. And, um, you know, when parents can't agree on fundamental things like which school to go to or, or which doctor to pick or which church to go to, um, then they have to go to the court for those decisions. So, the, you know, people really care about their kids. And, and uh, it's hard. You want to encourage people sure. to focus on unity as well as the choice. With this up in the legislature this one, what can people do if they want to deal they with this? They can contact it? their legislatures. They can go on the Arizona Supreme Court website. If you just Google the Arizona custody laws, you'll get a lot of information on this. But on the Arizona Supreme Court website, there is a link to the ad hoc custody committee and that has all of the new revisions on there and you can look at them and you can write your legislatures email them contact them and tell them how you feel about it 
What about drug abuse and all the custody matters? Are you seeing a lot of that? Met, so, met, especially with Breaking Bad on TV now? And yeah, shows. meth and prescription opiates are a big deal now. We see that a lot. Um, prescription opiates, I did a talk uh, at the State Bar Conference, and in the last 10, 15 years, emergency room uh, overdose has tripled, quadrupled in many states uh, because of prescription drugs. They're a bigger problem now almost than illegal drugs and especially opiates. Methamphetamine, um, they've kind of outlawed the labs in the United States, but we're really getting some very rich, pure, cheap methamphetamine coming up from Mexico, and it's a huge problem. You talk about a drug that will turn you from a good parent to a bad parent in about two months, it's methamphetamine. Wow. We don't have to fight about meth as much because it makes itself obvious and when a parent starts using meth they usually lose custody and they end up with supervised only visitation it's pretty easy to prove too um before i forget again let's put well i guess i don't have your your slide up there on that one sorry i can't do that i, I have the, i was gonna put your slide up on your thing but we're in, in chronological order on this one uh but you can check our our website and we'll have more information if you want to get to bob um what about relocation? How does that the new law is proposed, and how does that? There's all been this? a couple of uh, uh, strong proposals about revising relocation. None of them are um, are going to be passed anytime soon. But recently. Um, and the state bar worked on it a lot. There was a proposed revision to the relocation statute. Right now, if the parents are both in Arizona and they both have custody or visitation and one of the parents wants to move more than 100 miles, they have to give the other parent notice. They have to serve them with that notice. And if the other parent objects, there has to be a hearing. And a lot of times the judges don't let the parent move. They, the law says that it's better for both parents to be in the same town in most instances. To the parent, I mean, can you stop the parent? I mean, the can you stop the parent from moving? You can't you stop the parent from moving, moving you can stop but, the kids from moving. but you can't stop, the, you can stop the kid from moving, which means either the parent doesn't move or if they do move, the other parent gets custody. What about the child's input? We haven't discussed a lot of that. And that's a question I hear a lot, you know, what will my, the child, I want to say with mom, I want to try to say with dad, the kid gets caught in the middle. What do the courts do about hearing testimony for kids and is there an age difference on doing that? Well, there is a lot of research out there suggesting that children's input should be had and that children often, when they become adults, they feel left out. They felt like they weren't listened to enough in the divorce process. We rarely get them on the stand and have lawyers beat them up and cross-examine them, but uh, the motto we use in Pima County often is that the court, we have a very good conciliation court, we have some really good staff, psychologists and therapists there, and often the co times the court will have the child or children interviewed by the conciliation court, have that interview taped, but try to get the parties to agree that that will stay confidential and that those opinions will be not secret, but the, the judge won't have the parents know exactly what the child said. Sometimes they tape it and they, they disclose it to the parents. Uh, sometimes we have the child seen by a therapist or a psychologist, but oftentimes it's very important to get the children's input, especially as they get older. Have you ever seen the, the, the judge talk to the child in chambers? I have, yeah. I have, and it depends on the judge. If they have kids themselves, if they're comfortable talking to the kids themselves, they will do that. Some judges feel a little uncomfortable doing that, and they'd prefer to get somebody from the conciliation court to sit down with them and do most of the questioning. Um, and so I think it's really a judge-by-judge -judge basis. Okay. Um, what about children's ages? Do you find that it makes any difference? Well, I think they do because I, as children get older, their, their preferences become more and more important. My mantra is that as soon as the child is old enough to have a strong, consistent preference and it's based on good reasons, then the court will listen to them. And that's usually when the kids are 9, 10, 12. By the time they're in high school, the court almost always respects their opinion as to where they should live. We talk a lot about the statute. What's, what's the retro, retro effect of this? I mean, if it, the law does change, how's that going to affect people who are divorced, already divorced? It will not, only if they try to modify things. Um, so it probably won't be a, a floodgate to the courthouse because suddenly they can, people can get big differences. But if they do want to modify custody, if there's been a big change, if domestic violence is a serious issue, then th this law will be able to help them right away. Um, I have uh, one more question, but then I want to let you say anything you want to say at that point. What about grandparents and 
I mean, a lot of times they're, they're very involved with the kids. How does that all fit into the, the custody situation? Well, about a decade ago, there was a Supreme Court case called Troxel v. Granville that restricted the state's ability to give grandparents and third-party caretakers custody and visitation. So that Supreme Court case said basically that we have to defer to the parent. If the parent's making good decisions about visitation with the grandparents, the court can't get involved. So the bottom line to that is it's harder for grandparents to get forced visitation rights if they're getting some visitation already. I said one more question, but I, 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 it just occurred to me when you said that. What about people of forum shopping here? Can they go to another? I mean, the states vary, and you, now we're hearing a lot, once again, the political scene about the states could decide, but the divorce law is very different from state to state. Do you well, ever see a uh, people, you know, essentially even moving to another state or doing something else to get a different you, result? People will try to run, but you have to be in a state for six months before that state will have custody. And most people don't want to go live somewhere for six months just to get the better forum. And most states are pretty similar. Most of what I've talked about, these disputes about joint versus sole custody, domestic violence, drug abuse, how serious it is, there is a lot of national groups, especially the Association of Family and Conciliation Courts, that shares this research on a national basis. So I don't think there is as much as I don't, I don't know if you saw the article in the, in the paper this week about Italian divorces, which is very difficult, but apparently people are now going from Italy, it can take almost three years, they said it can test the case, almost 10 years to get a divorce, but Romania apparently is the, like the Reno used to be that, and a lot of people are going from Italy and virtually easily establishing residence in Romania, getting divorced, then going back to Italy. I, I could see, if it took that long to get a divorce, I could see why yeah. they would do that. Hey, before we wrap up on divorce overtime, Bob, once again, thank you very much. Is there anything else you want to add? And we've covered a lot of territory here. but uh... No, I think we've covered it all. I think we've touched upon all of it. And um, I encourage people to get educated about it and uh, try to get along. Try to think about these things before you have kids. Good. That's how the, the premarital counseling, I think, is uh, it's always a good yeah. thing to do that. When, uh, and right know what, the, what, what each of you expect of people each don't. other. The, the romantic don't. quality doesn't do it. You know, we've been watching Divorce Overtime now. Divorce TV over time, which is the first time we're doing this with Bob Barrasso. You know, we see a regular show and doing that one. It's a Divorce TV over.